Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. So we are moving on to human anatomy, osteology and embryology lecture series. Today's topic is pharyngeal or visceral arches which is also known as branchial or gill arches. Why it is known as branchial or gill arches? Because this is uh, humans uh, vertebra is similar to fish vertebra. So the fish arches known as gill arches or branchial arches so this is interchangeable also in exams the question might come as pharyngeal arch or branchial arch so it is interchangeable because both has both vertebrates has six pairs of arch but in humans the fifth arch is failed to develop and the sixth arch is rudimentary so let's see uh, the details of very interesting, very important pharyngeal or branchial arches. Pharyngeal arches or branchial arches. We'll start with this picture. So this is a primitive embryonic cavity, a longitudinal section picture. So you can see a primitive embryonic cavity around two to three weeks, just two to three weeks. So the total gestational period we know it is around 40 weeks. So you can imagine how primitive, how early it is. So in the earliest stage, if we take a longitudinal section, okay, this is a side view. So if we turn this 90 degree, we get a embryonic cavity like this or embryo like this. So if you take a longitudinal section, we get a, this type of primitive pharynx with three germ layers that is endoderm, mesoderm and ectoderm. So endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm are the three distinctive germ layers where the endoderm is covering the inner cavity. So the primitive pharynx is lined by endoderm which is the most innermost one ectoderm is the outermost covering of the embryonic cavity and the tissues or the portion which is between the endoderm and ectoderm is known as mesoderm so this is the earliest cavity this is the buccopharyngeal membrane which is the future mouth so just imagine you will be having head here the cranial cavity and this is the esophagus we will be having the other portions here okay so this is the very earliest primitive stage so this is around two to three weeks so so you need to visualize it in a three-dimensional view this is side view this is a front view this is a cross-sectional uh, sorry the longitudinal section of this embryo so around fourth week of intrauterine life or the fourth week embryo there will be a mesodermal out thickening so mesodermal thickening will be there which will be projected outward okay so out pouching of mesoderm on both sides of developing pharynx so there will be out pouching okay so it happens around fourth week so this is a mesoderm this green one so this will grow outward okay this will grow outward So this cavity will be like this at around fourth week of intrauterine life. So fourth week embryo will be like this. So this mesoderm is out pouching. So we have pouches like this one, two, three, four pouches on either side. Okay, so it is bilateral. So don't get confused when I say pouches. So we have two pouches basically that is mesodermal pouch which is actually known as arches that is branchial arches or pharyngeal arches okay that is mesodermal thickening or mesodermal pouches okay the next thing is endodermal pouches okay that is this one the endodermal pouches which is known as the real pharyngeal pouches okay the origin is what matters okay whether it origins from mesoderm whether it is origin from endoderm is what matters so if it is endodermal origin which is known as pharyngeal pouches 
and if it is a mesodermal thickening or mesodermal pouches which is known as branchial arches or pharyngeal arches so don't get confused the origin is important mesoderm endoderm and ectoderm and the most outer covering that is the ectodermal uh, origin which is known as branchial or pharyngeal clefts or grooves so the outpouching happening from the mesoderm so the mesoderm is growing outward okay on both sides at around fourth week of embryo which is known as pharyngeal arches or branchial arches so which is a mesodermal thickening okay so this is a mesodermal thickening hope you clear this idea so that is a mesodermal thickening which is known as arches okay arches so whereas the this is in both the both sides on the pharyngeal cavity so this blue is the violet is the pharynx the developing pharynx so these pharyngeal pouches okay is present between the arches okay and now we have pharyngeal pouches which form on the endodermal side okay so the endoderm you know inner cavity so endodermal side will be having pharyngeal pouches this is a mesodermal thickening okay this is outermost covering is the ectoderm the innermost layer is the endoderm so there will be pharyngeal pouches form on the endodermal side between the arches and there will be pharyngeal grooves or pharyngeal clefts okay so i interchangeably use pharyngeal and branchial which both are same so branchial cleft or branchial arches branchial pouches or pharyngeal pouches pharyngeal arches pharyngeal clefts and this pouches is the pockets of endoderm okay and there will be clefts pharyngeal clefts forms from the lateral ectodermal surface of the neck region to separate the arches okay so the arches develops from mesoderm the pouches develops from endoderm and the clefts is developing from ectoderm okay so the mesodermal thickening and there will be pharyngeal pouches between pharyngeal pouches between the arches and there will be the pharyngeal clefts which is forming from the ectodermal surface of the neck region to separate the arches okay so these arches are formed from mesoderm whereas the pouches which is present between the arches are from endoderm and the clefts is forming from ectoderm which is separating these two arches okay so the same picture i have drawn here okay so we have six pairs of arches in general but the problem is this is similar to fish that is why it is got this name gill arches but the problem is we don't have two pairs active so we have in turn four pairs and one is rudimentary so we have first arch second arch third arch fourth arch and the sixth arch the fifth arch is failed to develop and sixth arch also it is very rudimentary so actively we have four arches okay so this is a pharyngeal arches which is developed from mesodermal thickening okay though so this mesoderm outpouching and become pharyngeal arches and the endoderm pouches is formed between these two arches which is known as pharyngeal pouches and the pharyngeal clefts or branchial clefts which separates these arches fine so the same picture i am drawn here with more detail description so there will be a buccopharyngeal membrane just like here okay so this goes here then this goes here so buccopharyngeal membrane will be here we have 1 2 3 4 pouches pharyngeal pouches okay so here the number might not be true here this is a clear picture i just wanted to 
differentiate between mesoderm, ectoderm and endoderm. So now we are in this picture. We have clearly one, two, three, four and fifth one that is a sixth arch. Fifth is missing. Missing in the sense it has failed to develop. So we have four pouches. Similarly, we have four clefts. Why? Because we have five arches. So there will be four spaces between these. Okay, four mesodermal spaces that is known as pharyngeal pouches and four outermost covering that is clefts or pharyngeal or brachial clefts. Okay, so that is the space between this. So ectoderm will be the outermost covering. So this is the ectoderm which is known as pharyngeal cleft. The inner layer is known as endoderm which is the pharyngeal pouch hope you are clear with this so you need to visualize from the very beginning of embryogenesis where the one cell two cell four cell morula blastoloid is becoming it is changing into three layer cells that is endoderm ectoderm and mesoderm after that around two to three weeks this type is formed with with primitive pharynx so around four weeks we have thickening on the either side of pharynx that is mesodermal thickening we have one two three four five arches one two three four pouches and four clefts okay so these are the arches which later give rise to various structures in the head and neck region so hope you are clear with this picture this is a human face on a lateral aspect this is a nose this is the lips this is a chin and this is a neck portion okay so we are talking about pharyngeal arches which ultimately give rise to mandible maxilla hyoid bone and all the muscles various arteries nerve elements the ligaments in the head and neck region that is important of branchial arches or pharyngeal arches okay so till now i hope you are clear with this this picture this picture and this picture okay now we are moving on to the details of each arch so each arch will consist of a cartilaginous element a cranial nerve an aortic arch and a myoblast which are basically neuroclear cells so cartilage will give rise to uh, various elements with his bones and cranial nerve which is associated with each arch which uh, supplies those muscles and other parts and aortic arch which is uh, mm, the arterial supply or the vascular supply of that particular arch and its other related structures and myoblast are the primitive cells which later give rise to various muscles associated with each arch now we are moving on to the derivatives of each arch which is very very important uh, it is commonly asked question the pharyngeal arch derivative of first arch second arch third fourth and sixth and its muscles and its nerve supply and its arterial supply the ligaments associated the bones associated so you need to remember this picture okay so the first arch is known as mandibular arch okay so the first pharyngeal arch is known as mandibular arch and which is the first of sixth pharyngeal arch that develops during the fourth week of development and it is located between the stomodium and the first pharyngeal groove okay so this is the first pharyngeal groove and this is a stomodium and it forms between these two okay that is the first pharyngeal arch which is formed between the stomodium that is the stomodium is a future oral cavity and this buccopharyngeal membrane which lines the stomodium so the first pharyngeal arch which is also known as mandibular arch okay so this is the first one is a mandibular arch okay 
so this is a lateral side this is just one arch not the dis both arch so the expanded version of this arch is this elongated black this one okay so this is known as mandibular arch okay so as we mentioned it has one cartilage it has one cranial nerve and it has supply aortic supply that is a vascular supply and muscles attached so every arch will give rise to bones certain ligaments certain muscles and there will be a nerve associated with it so let's see one by one the first one is mandibular arch so the cartilage which later gives rise to uh, various bones is known as the Meckel's cartilage that is the cartilage of first arch or the mandibular arch is known as Meckel's cartilage which is very very important it's commonly asked as question Meckel's cartilage and its derivatives so Meckel's cartilage which give rise to okay so this is Meckel's cartilage this red dotted line which is present within the mandibular arch okay so Meckel's cartilage which forms the mesoderm of mandibular process and eventually regresses to form the incus and malleus of middle ear the anterior ligament of malleus and the sphenomandibular mandibular ligament okay so the mandible so you can see that it looks like a mandible right so the mandible or lower jaw forms by the perichondral ossification using this Meckel's cartilage as a template. Okay, so this is malleus bone, this is incus bone. So we have three bones present in our ear. Okay, so hope you can imagine a future ear at this place. Okay, so this is a mandible. So this is the ear cavity. So future three bones, but the two bones are developed here. That is within the first pharyngeal arch, the malleus, incus, and the mandible. Okay. So there are lots of bones are formed within the mandibular arch. Let's see one by one. So the malleus, incus, then the premaxilla, then the maxilla, zygomatic bone mandible and part of temporal bone because temporal bone is formed here so part of temporal bone will be the first arch okay so we have max malleus incus the first two bones okay the first two upper bones of uh, ear cavity then we have the premaxilla maxilla zygoma mandible and part of temporal bone so most of the facial bones are formed from the first arch okay so from this arch from this arch most of the facial bones are formed so that is a skeletal part bone now the ligament is sphenomandibular ligament okay so we have sphenoid bone here and it is joint mandible so sphenomandibular ligament is formed from the first arch and other structures are this uh, squamous part of temporal bone exactly and the anterior ligament of uh, malleus and the palatine bones all are formed from first arch now we have muscles of mastication which is formed from first arch because it is since it is a masticatory muscles most of the muscles are attached to mandible okay so what are the muscles of mastication we have four um, muscles that is masseter muscle medial and lateral pterygoid muscle and temporalis muscle so all are associated with mandible so it is very easy to understand if there is mandible and if there is mandibular arch there will be muscles of mastication because mandible is the bone which is associated with mastication so always connect muscles of mastication with mandible so it is easy to remember the arch one give rise to muscles of mastication because why i am telling you this because the mandible 
instead of mandibular arch the second arch giving rise to muscles of facial expression that is a different one okay so you always get confused so the mandible is associated with muscles of mastication so the first arch giving these muscles of mastication those are masseter medial and lateral pterygoid and temporalis along with that we have mylohyoid muscle the anterior belly of digastric muscle tensor valley palatine muscle and tensor tympani muscle okay so all these are derived from uh, first arch and also along with that we have the tongue develops from anterior to third of tongue because oral cavity is here so we also have tongue here so we are not um, going very detail about this so anyway the tongue the anterior two-third of the tongue is developed from the first arch okay now we have nerve supply that is uh, the first arch is known as mandibular arch uh, and nerve supply is basically from trigeminal nerve the nerve supply of first arch is trigeminal nerve so we have uh, three branches basically of thalamic maxillary and mandibular branches so maxillary branch and mandibular branch and also cauda tympani branch which is a branch of facial nerve is supplying the uh, first arch now let's move on to the second pharyngeal arch okay so this is the second pharyngeal arch second pharyngeal arch so second pharyngeal arch you can see the second pharyngeal arch which is the this line okay so it is very easy to study second pharyngeal arch the most upper part we have one bone which is stapes okay so the third bone of ear cavity malis incus and stapes so the bony parts are stapes then the styloid process styloid process then we have this is the hyoid bone so hyoid bone has basically body and the cornua the body and cornua is there so body has superior surface and inferior surface and cornua has smaller part and uh, smaller cornua and greater cornua so the second arch and third arch are involved in the formation of hyoid bone so the bones are lesser cornua of hyoid bone whereas the greater cornua is developed from the third arch hope you are getting uh, uh, getting the idea of it okay so it is not very easy to depict here so this is a hyoid bone this black one it has two parts basically that is cornua and the body cornua has smaller and greater part smaller is this one that is formed from the second arch whereas the greater cornua is developed from the third arch and the superior surface of the body is developed from the second arch whereas the inferior surface or the lower part is developed from the third arch okay and uh, we have um, the ligaments uh, in first arch we have seen sphenomandibular ligament in the second arch it is stylo hyoid ligament okay first arch it was pheno mandibular ligament and second arch it is stylo hyoid ligament uh, one thing i forgot to mention that is the arterial supply that is a blood supply of first arch which is uh, from a maxillary artery which i forgot to mention so the nerve was uh, trigeminal nerve whereas a maxillary nerve mandibular nerve and a part of facial nerve that is cauda tympani nerve is involved the arterial supply is maxillary artery okay uh, now we are into second and third arches the second arch i told you it all basically starts from s the stapes styloid process all are bony processes or the bone we are talking about smaller corner of hyoid superior surface of body of hyoid and again the ligament is stylohyoid ligament okay and the first arch the cartilage was known as meckel's cartilage the second arch uh, which is known as rachel's cartilage okay so the meckel's cartilage and rachel's cartilage are important question so this arch uh, is giving rise to 
all these structures and muscles are like I mentioned muscles of facial expression then platysma muscle stylohyoid muscle and the posterior belly of digastric in the first stars it was anterior belly of digastric and this is the posterior belly of digastric okay second arch is giving posterior belly of digastric stapedius muscle auricular muscles uh, occipital frontalis muscle all are um, from the second arch and the nerve supply of second arch is facial nerve and the blood supply is basically from um, stapedial artery okay so stapedial artery is the blood supply the first arch was uh, maxillary artery and second arch is stapedial artery whereas the nerve supply is facial nerve and on the muscles derived I mentioned now we are into the third arch third arch only two bones basically that is uh, greater conua greater conua and the lower surface of body of hyoid the other parts the remaining parts of hyoid bone which is derived from uh, third arch okay there is no ligament from third fourth uh, and sixth arches and uh, the third arch is giving rise to only one muscle which is stylopharyngeus and the nerve supply is glossopharyngeal nerve and fourth and sixth is compendly give laryngeal uh, cartilage such as thyroid, cricoid, arytenoid and other laryngeal cartilages and this is hope you can see this is a thyroid cartilage this is a tracheal rings and cricoid cartilage so all are derived from fourth and sixth arches so the nerve of first arches basically mandibular and maxillary nerve but part of facial nerve that is quadra tympani is there second arch the nerve is uh, facial nerve the third arch is glossopharyngeal nerve so the fourth arch is superior laryngeal branch of vagus whereas the sixth arch is recurrent laryngeal branch of vagus okay so the fourth and sixth arch combined ligaring uh, cricothyroid levator palatal constrictors of pharynx and intrinsic muscles of larynx so that was about the pharyngeal arches uh, regarding the blood supply that is a maxillary artery uh, first arch is supplied by maxillary artery then the stapedial artery third arch is by common carotid and internal carotid artery fourth arch by the subclavian artery and aortic artery sixth arch is uh, basically by pulmonary artery and ductus arteriosus so this is all about branchial arches it is a very important question so question might be branchial arches pharyngeal pouches its derivatives meckel's cartilage uh, riches cartilage so the first cartilage is known as mandibular uh, oh, sorry the first arch is known as mandibular arch the second arch is known as hyoid arch because it is mostly associated with hyoid bone the stylohyoid ligament and the smaller corner of hyoid superior surface of body of hyoid and the styloid process so we need to learn the bonds formed from it the muscles attached to it and the ligament and the blood supply and the nerve supply okay so the muscles i repeat the first stage is giving masticatory muscles and the mylohyoid muscle anterior belly of digastric tensor tympani and tensor palatini whereas the second arch giving muscles of facial expression posterior belly of digastric stylohyoid stapedius muscle third arch is giving stylopharynges fourth and sixth arch is giving muscles of larynx that is thyroid cricoid and other muscles and the nerve supply um, the mandibular maxillary and cauda tympani in the first arch the facial nerve in the second arch and the glossopharyngeal in third arch and the vagus nerve superior laryngeal 
for the fourth arch and the recurrent laryngeal for the sixth arch okay and the bones formed from first arch malleus incus maxilla zygoma mandible and the a part of temporal bone the second arch stapes styloid process and the cornua smaller cornua and superior surface third arch is greater cornua and inferior surface of hyoid and this other bones so it was bones and this is muscles so that's all about branchial arches pharyngeal arches i took a lot of time because it is very very important uh, primitive um, or the embryogenic uh, the pouches are very important so the rest of the um, anatomy chapters will be uh, based on this one so you need to understand what is ectoderm endoderm mesoderm what is the first second third fourth and sixth arches and its derivative so you can study very easily uh, just like how we study tooth formation the basic steps should be very thorough so you can easily build up the remaining chapters over it so it is a very very important chapter not just for your exam purpose it is important to learn the other chapters as well okay thank you i'll come up with another topic in anatomy